Welcome to our online YouTube church channel. We'll be bringing to you our online service in a moment, but in the meantime, we would like to find out if our sermons have been a blessing to you. If the answer is yes, please subscribe, leave a comment, and a like if the messages have blessed you. In addition to that, we have some exciting news. There are a number of inspirational books written by our lead pastor, Victor E. Takumbi. One, The Believer's Compliment. Two, The Believer's Treatise Starter, Pace Setter and Finisher Edition. Three, Can You Still See the Prize? Four, Praying with the Scriptures. Five, Learning to Trust Jesus Christ Through It All. Six, The Mystery of the Brazen Serpent. And seven, Activating God's Mantle Across Generations. Check them out from the following bookstores. Amazon.com, Lulu.com, Bocus.com, and at Libris.com. We also have inspiring and spirit-filled songs produced by our lead pastor and choir. You can download them on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, and other music platforms. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube music channel at Sir Victor TM Official. God bless you. Please stay tuned.
And may the Spirit of the Lord speak to us tonight. May the Lord give us a word in season. May the word of the Lord not fall on the ground. That may, our, may the Spirit of the Lord touch our hearts. That let our hearts be transformed. May the Lord take away the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Amen. And we pray that let the word of God that we shall receive tonight, let it grow and be fruitful. Amen. That after this encounter with this word tonight, let the dunamis power of God's word bring transformation in our life. Amen. That we may begin to flourish like trees that are planted by the riverside. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you already for your word because we know our lives will be touched tonight. We thank you, Father, therefore we pray, let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let our ears hear. May our mind be transformed, our hearts be transformed, and our spirit be renewed in the name of Jesus. Let your word be released in its totality. We commit your servants into your hands. We commit the choir into your hands. May your spirit, O oh Lord, lead. They may lead the church that we may worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. We pray for your servant. Father, give him utterance that he shall speak your word in the name of Jesus. He shall speak your word in the name of Jesus Christ. That he shall not speak from human wisdom. But let him speak, O oh Lord, your word and your word alone. For your entrance of your word bring it life and give it understanding unto the simple. Therefore, we pray, let your word first in.
Amen. Amen. I will praise him every day. I will praise the Lord.
As we listen to the word of God this evening. Yes. But before we receive the word of God, we want to begin to prepare our minds. Yes. We want to begin to talk to God, oh, yes. to minister unto Him, unto us today. Yes. He wants Him to take the stage in this place yes. and then let every man disappear, yes. that He alone be glorified. Amen. You have come from the east from the west. You mm. don't want to take the same direction back home. Mm. You want to live from here impacted by the word of God. Amen. Just begin to talk to him this evening that he should not pass you by but that may his word that he has sent forth this night may he touch you in the name of Jesus. Father we pray even as we have come here. Father we pray oh God that we shall not return the same. But that that your word shall minister unto us. That your word shall minister unto us. In every aspect of our life, we have those that are in authority over us. Those who come from Africa, from Cameroon, for example, in some of the villages, we have chiefs and we have the king's men who stand to make judgment, for example, or they even set rules in order for people to live by it. Mm. We have come into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. He has reigned in our life before. Mm -hmm. We want to call upon him to come and take the leadership mm. of us at this moment and even in the moments to come. Amen. We have sung this song before, but I want us to sing it with another understanding. Amen. I want us to sing it with a new revelation. Amen. That he will take the stage. Amen. Even as he has reigned and we have seen the good works yes. that he has done, yes. so shall it be if we believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we we'll just begin to sing this song. Amen. 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 Yesterday you reigned.
You want us to reach others, right? Please subscribe, like, and share. Please, please don't leave without sharing. Thank you so much. Let's get the numbers of subscribers up, up, and up. Have a blessed week ahead in Jesus' name.
son. I pray tonight the Lord help somebody to catch up despite the times. I am praying for someone here tonight. You have been going through trials and tribulations, but no matter what you're going through, it's going to pass by after a while. You are going to forget those trials, those troubles that you be true and look behind and say how far God has brought me from. He has brought me from a mighty long way. He has sent me up in the land of the living. I would have fainted except I have believed that I will see his goodness in the land of the living. I feel the presence of You want us to reach others, right? Please subscribe, like, and share. Please, please don't leave without sharing. Thank you so much. Let's get the numbers of subscribers up, up, and up. Have a blessed week ahead in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. We thank God for yet another opportunity to hear his word. Amen. Amen. We still in a year of favor. We are still in the year of favor and we continue with access. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week we looked at Uh, I'm a bit tired. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of association. Amen. How the people will meet in all God has put in our lives. How they can influence our journey to get into our <coughs> destiny. And that is how access, to give us that access to help us to fulfill God's plan for our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's my belief that the Holy Spirit is helping us and it is shaping us in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're looking at, last week we look at how people that God has placed in our lives, 
they can help us to either attain this objective or receive this crown faster or they may slow us down. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I want us to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the title which, uh, the message tonight is titled, The Prosperity of the Soul. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I pray the Holy Spirit help us. This is not going to be an exciting preaching, but it will be a teaching. So I pray that we all stay connected and as the Lord has reserved this message for us, the Bible says he sent his word in season. May our souls be touched, or may our understanding be enlightened, that we may receive that which the Lord has for us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll be looking at the prosperity of the soul. This is what I call true prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So our main scripture tonight will be from 10 John chapter 1 and verse 2. 10 John 1 and verse 2. Now, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as you are so prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at it. It's the verse that we, 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 we know. But let's read it again and again. It's very, some, there are about three or four words that are very critical in this verse. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. That is the first one. You have to prosper in all things. Two, be in good health. You may prosper in all things. Secondly, and be in good health. And the last, which is the most important for tonight's message, just as you are sold, prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we live in a, in a time where we hear a lot about the prosperity gospel. Hallelujah. And this has caused us today believers to miss God's purpose for our lives. It has caused our attention to be drifted to what true prosperity is. Now, we, the word, because that is why if we hear, we say, you are blessed. We say, I receive. Receive your miracle cards. Receive your job. Now, we, if we look at it critically, we realize that what we call blessing has been more subjected to materialism. Mm -hmm. Blessings of to, to us believers today is materialism. Mm -hmm. If we listen to our testimonies, it's not wrong to be blessed financially, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to our testimonies, you will hear, I saw a seed and God has blessed me with the job. Or I have received this. I have received that. It's not wrong. It is God's will for our life. It is our right. It is our heritage. Because from the beginning, God says, these things I have created. He says, go and have dominion. It means all that is on earth belongs to you and I. Amen. So it's not something that we need to... Where we see that we have limited blessings of God to these things. God bless me with a wife. Good. God bless me with children. God bless me with document. God bless me with a job. God bless me with this and so on and so forth. We see now we realize that we begin to serve God for what we can get, the things we can see, and we miss what is the real prosperity in Christ. Hallelujah. So if we look again at this verse, again, it says, Beloved, that I pray that you may prosper in all things. So the first thing I want us to observe that is that you can prosper in all things and not be in good health. Now, now we we'll come, we we'll come for. Uh, uh, no, please, before I go there, let me take, let me skip a little bit. If we go to First Thessalonians chapter five, verse, uh, uh, verse twenty-three, Apostle Paul says, "I pray your whole spirit, soul, body." be preserved unto the coming of the Lord. He says what? I pray that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved unto the Lord. This comes as a confirmation that we know that man is a trapatite being. 
The Bible says, God says, let us make man in our image. We know that God in his, in, in his complete, in his fullness, is, 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 a, is, a, is also a tripartite being. That's why we say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the same way, God has also made man. If we listen, if we look at this scripture, the scripture is not written with error. The first is what? Spirit. The second is soul. And the third is what? Body. Now, I believe that we know, we understand there's a difference between the soul, the spirit, and the body. And this theory, this is what encompass man. My true self, what it's, let's say my name is Nixon, as you know. My true me is the spirit, my spirit. That is what God created. That is what has existed with God from the beginning. That is what God said unto Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed. Because he had the, his spirit was with the Lord. It had existed before this being exists. Mm -hmm. Now, when God wants to send you on earth, he gives your spirit a soul, then put in a body. Now, why does he do that? Because what has the legal authority and right to exist in the earth realm is the body. That is why the body perishes, but the soul and the spirit lives. But now, this is interesting. If the God says God is holy, there is no sin in him. And the Bible comes and says, man is born into iniquity. We were conceived in iniquity, sorry. In other words, it means that we were conceived in sin. It doesn't mean that we existed in sin. So if truly my spirit is of the Lord, it means my spirit is holy. It knows no evil. But now it is given a soul. That is why if our understanding makes us to understand that there's a difference between the spirit and the soul. Now, for one week, I'll, I'll explain again a, a, a bit later the difference. But now let's go back to what I was trying to say, back to our main verse. It says that, that you may prosper in all things. This means that first, we can either prosper in all things and be in good health. That is one, equation one. Let's do it mathematically. <laughs> now, equation two. We can prosper in all things and not be in good health. Equation three. No, let's, let's, let's end at one and two first. First, we prosper in all things and be in good health. We may prosper in, some, uh, 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 in all things and not be in good health. And lastly, we may prosper in some things, not all things. Now, this is the first part. Now, the second part of this same verse says, just as your soul prosper. It means that our soul can either prosper or not prosper. I want us to break it down and see the different scenarios. So as a child of God, your soul can either prosper or not prosper. What is the exam or that is the difference between I and Elon Musk? What is the difference between you and Elon Musk, for example? He's the richest man on earth as of now. What is the difference between him and us? No, he, he, there's a difference. Firstly, he has more money than I do. He has more cars than I do. He can purchase whatever he desires that I cannot. Does it change the fact that I don't have my own money? I'm not poor. I have my own money. It ends at my level. That is prosperity. So if you look at it materially, uh, mat uh, uh, physically, we can prosper at different levels. In the same way, spiritually, we can also prosper at different levels. Amen. That's what I want us to understand. So if you become a child of God today, over time you are supposed to prosper or you broke. Spiritually. And that can only be manifest of God. We cannot change the spirit. We cannot change the body. The only thing that we can develop now is our soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Look at the characteristics of the spirit. Romans 8, chapter 16 says, It is the spirit of God that bears witness with our spirits that we are what? Sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the spirit of God that bears witness with our spirits that we are sons of God. We are witnesses. Now we see that the spirit of God can only communicate with our spirit, not with the body, nor with our soul. 
because he knows our spirit and it's holy, it's pure. And he realized the first thing. So what is the difference between man and angels? The Bible says, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits. If man is like God, therefore we are a spirit. But what is the difference between angels who are spirit, the spirit that are called angels, and the spirit that manifests as man? The first thing is that God's relation with the angelic realm is through command and authority. God made, created his throne and the angels are meant to worship him. They communicate with God by doing that which God wants. They help God they, based on assignment. But when God made man, he says, let us make man in our own image and give him dominion. That's why the Bible says, the psalmist says, who is man who is made a little lesser, lesser than the angels? but has dominion over the works of God. Because our relationship now with God, God relates with man on a relationship basis. So the soul, our soul is what differentiates us from the angels. Because now with our soul has the power to will, to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So our soul now is itself, now when we look at the soul, the soul is, is an intermediate between the spirit and the body. The soul communicates that which the spirit wants, and then the body now manifests it in the physical realm. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, the soul has feelings. It is like the mind, what we call my mind, our heart, because it communicates, it has a right to choose. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, what separates us from the love of God? It is our sins. Now, when we begin to live a life of unrighteousness, our spirit now becomes silent and it begins to shift because it, it, it knows no iniquity. It doesn't want sin. Then it causes our soul now to have dominion over our flesh. Excuse me. Now, I also want us to look and pay attention. The Bible makes us to understand that the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. We can see that in the book of, the book of uh, Jude. Now they are contending to have dominion over our flesh. Mm -hmm. Now the flesh is the legal expression of humanity in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Now that is why the spirit of God now needs a flesh to manifest in the physical realm, which is the earth realm. Mm -hmm. The spirit now of the devil is also looking for bodies, for flesh to manifest itself. So because the soul has a choice, it either chooses for the expression of the spirit of God or the spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. So we believers today, we miss, without a uh, background, I believe that we can go forward and maybe I will explain again. Today we miss a lot the focus of prosperity or we are limited to wealth as and riches. We consider uh, 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 blessings as material gains, as I said. Hallelujah. I, I, I just want to make it clear. I'm not saying that it's wrong to be rich. Or if you are blessed materially, you cannot serve God. That's wrong. Because the Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was blessed. He was rich. The Bible says Job was the richest man in the East. To this day, Job, they, had, they were blessed. There are a lot of children of God, we can go down that they were very blessed. God needs blessing. That God gives us finances. But our finances our, is, not a, is not what is true prosperity. Because if this was true prosperity, then what is the difference between an unbeliever and a believer? We have a lot of unbelievers that are far more richer than us. So prosperity is not based on materialism. It's not based on money. It is based on the soul. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the Bible makes us understand that the blessings of God make it rich and added to us. Mm. No soul. Amen. Amen. And if we go to Matthew chapter 16 verse 26. Matthew 16 verse 26. He says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world 
and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Hallelujah. Now, I just want us to understand that when I was studying about soul, like when the Bible talks about soul, there are three, in, uh, it can represent three different things. You can, so, so, sometimes a soul in some version can talk about man, you as a person. Sometimes it represents what we are talking about, our soul, which is unique as an entity, as part of the chapter of man. We understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. So but in this case, what shall he profit a man? Now he's talking of a being that completes you, the body, the spirit, and the, the spirit, the soul, and the body. If you gain all these things, now you gain all these material things, but you lose what? Your soul. Like I said, the body perishes. The soul and the spirit don't die. What ascends to judgment is the soul. Hallelujah. The spirit lives on. That is why even the angels that were casted from creation, they don't die. They roam the surface of the earth because spirit don't die. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. we can, I believe that we cannot deal with our spirit, but what we can deal with is our soul. How much we can, we can transform our soul now would help the body now to express that which the Lord has deposited in, in our spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, and the rulers of darkness in high places. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, like, as, like we saw in the previous verse, that what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? This comes to the confirmation that we have two kinds of blessings. Material blessing or prosperity. That is a gain. What you gain the whole world and you lose your soul or prosperity of your soul. It's a more confirmation of what we read before I had said earlier. Now, when we come to Ephesians, it tells us now, it goes deeper. Apostle Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh. Now, what is the flesh? Is the outward being. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we confirm that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood? We can see that in the life of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes us understand that when Peter spoke to Jesus, that he should not go to the cross. Jesus says, get down behind me, Satan. He did not say what? Get down behind me, Peter. Now, it means that at that instance, Peter was a, is a believer. He was with Jesus. But at that instance, there was a disconnect between his spirit and his soul. That the spirit now of the devil, which can be manifested as the principalities that we're talking about, the powers, the spiritual wickedness, and the rulers of darkness in high places. These are different kinds of spirit, but all of the evil spirit. Now, not a devil copies, because in the kingdom of God, we have dominions, we have powers, we have deep ministering spirits. So when the devil copies, he also uses the same names. He has his own, he calls principalities, he also has powers, rulers of darkness. But these are different dimensions of the enemy. You understand? Principalities what we call familiar spirits. As we go, we, we, are not, we don't want to focus on the different types of them, because I believe that we have a teaching on that before. But now we see that Jesus said, get down behind me, Satan. Now he rebuked the spirit that was speaking and not the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. So I will, I, will, I will not focus on physical prosperity. I would like us to focus on prosperity of our soul. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are the characteristics of the soul? The first thing is that it loves pleasure. It loves what? Pleasure. Our soul loves fun, entertainment. That is why we can sit and pass hours upon hours watching movies, games, talking, you know, doing fun things that are not profitable to our soul, to our spirit man, because it loves pleasure. The second thing is that it can be moved by what it hears and what it sees. That is why you see the media 
or the, or, or the world, the, the children of the world invest so much in the media. Because when we seek to watch, the more we watch, the more we hear, it becomes normal. Our soul begins to desire these things. So the soul can be transformed, it can be affected by what it sees and what it hears, what you see and what you hear. The third thing is that it has feelings. We got, let's look at Matthew 26, verse 27. That the soul has feelings. Hallelujah. Is it 26, 27? And he took a cup, gave time, and maybe I've written wrong. I don't think this is the scripture I want. Try to see, no, it's not 27. Well, let's, we'll come there later, maybe we'll be seeing. The next example, I wanted to show us a verse that we see how the soul has feeling. Hallelujah. Amen. It says it can be killed. Let's look at Matthew 10, 28. I'll check that other verse later. Matthew 10, 28, it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but not able to kill the soul. But fear rather which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, the spirits don't die. But the soul can be killed. It can be destroyed. That's why God is telling, Jesus is telling us that we should not fear that which can kill the body. But we should fear that which can kill both the body and the soul. And the last characteristic of the soul is that it can be transformed. It can be changed. You have a power to change it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is somebody following? Oh, yes. Glory, glory. Now, so how can we prosper our soul? That is our question. How can we cause our soul to prosper? I would like us to look at First Peter chapter 1, 22 to 25. Our sister, you help us to read. Excuse me. First Peter chapter 1, 22 to 25. 1 Peter 1, 22 to 25. Yes. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brain. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, mm. which liveth and abided forever. Mm. 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flowers of grass. The grass withered, and the flower thereof followed away. Mm. 25. But the word of the Lord endured forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. Amen. So the first way we can prosper our soul is by the word of God. Verse 22 says, Since you have purified your soul in obeying the truth, through the spirit in sincere love of brethren, loving one another fervently, Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the first way is through the word of God. We can also see that in Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. It says what? Well, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and of the marrow and in a and is a descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God is sharper than uh, every two, uh, a two-edged sword. It can divide the soul from the spirit. Like I said, that is the connection. Now, the more of God's word we have in us, like 2 Timothy 2.15 says, we should study to show ourselves approved. 
Why is Paul telling, unto, uh, telling Timothy this? To study. The more we study God's word, the more we listen to God's word, that is what touches our soul. Because it carries that power to transform. He has that power to influence. The more of, of the more of the word of God we have, help us to transform our soul, so that our bodies now can be subjected to the leading of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see that it's very important. The Bible makes us to understand that we grow from glory. The Lord takes us from glory to glory, and from strength to strength. So as a child of God, the first thing we need to do is to invest time. To study God's word. The more of the word of God we read, it's not, that it's not only limited to reading, but we have to meditate over it. We have to seek understanding. We hear that sometimes we hear, but we do not understand. So if we are conscious, that we begin to desire more of his word. Because it is the word of God that will arise and help us in times of need. It begins to shape our soul. To, uh, because when our soul now is shaped, it becomes subjected. Then we begin to realize that our spirit now can have dominion to express God's will for our life to their bodies. That is being manifested now physically. And why is God interested in that? That's why the Bible says that His will be done on earth as is as it is in. So we need. The reason that his will is not here on earth is because we have not been able, or us believers, or mankind have not been able to allow the expression of our spirit on the earth realm. Because the enemy now has corrupt, corrupted man from the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. The second way we can do this is also through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Let's see what Romans 8.13 says. I will read it. Romans 8 verse 18. For if ye live after flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do multiply the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Glory Amen. be to Jesus. Now, this is our support telling again. If we live after the flesh, I said from the I said some time ago that the soul longs. Okay, let's go to Galatians. That we see. So if we live after the flesh, we will die. But let ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body. Hallelujah. Amen. We should allow the spirit to modify the deeds of our bodies. And we can only do that by prospering our, uh, our soul so that it can be subjected to the spirit. Hallelujah. And don't live in accordance to the flesh. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, 16 and 17. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Galatians 5, 16 and 17 and also we'll look then we'll go down to 24 to 26. What does 5 is... Uh, from verse 15, uh, 16, yes. What are these things that can you read for us again? This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Oh. 17. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, mm -hmm. and the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary, contrary the one to the other. Thank you. Just well, let's look again. It says what? The war for the flesh lost against the spirit. The flesh and the spirit don't agree. That's why we have an intermediate. It says the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that ye cannot do things that ye would. This ye would is who? Is the spirit us. Because our flesh and our spirit are in contention. On who should dominate the soul. Because the power is in the soul. If we transform the soul, then the spirit now expresses itself. If we allow the kingdom of darkness to take preeminent or dominion over our soul, the evil now is expressed. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we sin, before we sin, our soul has been subjected to the power of darkness. 
to the evil spirit. Then it began, we express it. Because there is no man who sin without a thought. You know that this thing, even when we want to commit from adultery, stealing, whatever there was, you are conscious. Then you say, well, let me just do it. Hallelujah. This is short. This is practical Christianity. It's not only I receive, I receive. We have to speak it practically. So that when we find ourselves in that contention, now we understand, you know that my spirit is warring with my flesh. Who shall I yield to? If you go and sin, then you know that after that account exercise, you know that you have given in to your flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's look at 24 to 26. Still under Galatians 5. 24, Galatians 5, 24 to 26. Yes. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Have with, what? Has crucified the flesh yes. with the affections and lust. With it, my wife was saying, with its passion and desires. If you are in Christ, you have to crucify the flesh. You mean that there are some things that are pleasurable to the flesh, but it's not profitable. There are things that we don't do not because we cannot do them. It's because it is pleasurable, but you know that it's not profitable. So in other words, it's our choice to do evil. Because at that instant, we feel it is profitable for the moment. But we forget that trouble may last through the night. What comes in the morning? Job. Morning is what? Light. The Bible says, when light shines, there is no darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend it. In the book of John, it says, for God is light. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is our choice. Because it's telling, Paul is telling us here in Galatians, we who are in Christ, we have crucified the flesh. That was what Apostle Paul had to go to that dimension based on the prosperity of the soul. He said, it's not I who live. It is Christ. That lives through me. It means he has prospered his soul that is no longer, the, he, he cares not about his flesh. That's why he says, God, I am, we are pressed on every side. He got to a dimension, he got prospered. If we, can, if we want to look at we can say the Apostle Paul is like, or Elon uh, 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 Musk, if we want to look at my, uh, uh, games, we can say like the Elon Musk in our world today. Because he prospered his soul. That it was not, the flesh had nothing over on him. It was totally crucified. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Now, the, the third aspect on how we can prosper our soul, when we go to Psalms 1, there is one. Glory be to Jesus. Is somebody understanding? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are not exciting our spirit, but we are teaching ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. We thank God for his word. Amen. Now, what does the Bible say? Can we read? Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners. Yes. Nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Yes. But his delight his is delight. in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Mm -hmm. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the like rivers of yes. water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Mm -hmm. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Glory be to Jesus. Now I want us to take note verse. Why do I say we should read it again? He says, He shall be like a tree planted by the river. He shall bring out his fruit, his prosperity. Is it? But now the last sentence, it says, and whatsoever he doeth, prosper. Now the first prosperity where your fruits is soul prosperity of your soul. 
Now it becomes a fruit that is visible. Then the last sentence is that whatever you do, that's now physical prosperity. Glory be to Jesus. For you to be fruitful, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a depiction of the prosperity of your soul. Now, we'll go back again from verse 1. The third thing I want us to understand that how we can prosper our soul is through our lifestyle. The first, now under the lifestyle, I will divide it into different categories. The first, our lifestyle based on the people, the company we keep and the people we, we go to for counsel. This is important. I will not discuss because our year, last week we spoke about our uh, 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 association. This is the company. But it says that blessed. Now this is blessed. This is what Bible calls blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you are blessing, in other words, is a man who walks in the counsel of the godly. That is true blessing. Blessed, this is the psalmist, is the man, so we can read it again and say, blessed is a man that walketh in the counsel of the godly. This man now is a totality of the spirit, your soul, and the body. Now it works in the advice and the way and the counsel of the godly. That is when the Bible says you are blessed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the Bible says, you are blessed. The second aspect that we can learn again from here, it says, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The word of God again that we said from the beginning. You take delight. So a blessed man is a man who takes delight in God's word. He finds joy and fulfillment in the word of God. The third way of our lifestyle is a lifestyle of meditation. So the first thing is you have to have delight. The more delight you take in God's word is a function of prosperity. Now, after delight, it means that there are some people who, have, who can only read, but do not meditate. It says, but meditate on God's word. And in his law, and do, do, uh, do he meditate day and night. So when you begin to meditate day and night, that is when, uh, as I said, the soul can be transformed. As we meditate day and night, that is how we begin to transform our soul. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you know, the third aspect is that our lifestyle of a lifestyle of holiness. If we strive to live a life of holiness. It's a form, it's a, it, 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 with that consciousness, it means that we, begin, we, we are consciously crucifying the flesh and begin to do that which is holy in accordance to God's word and his laws. Hallelujah. So we see that prosperity is at the fruit that we bring forth. And what the Bible says, what is the fruit? Your, your, your action. Your fruit of love, peace, joy. The fruit that you bring forth is a function of your prosperity, true prosperity of your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the next aspect of how we can prosper our soul is through evangelism and soul winning. We can see that in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The Bible says, He that winneth a soul is wise. This he now is a our trap attack again. It does not win a person. It does not win a flesh. You win what the soul. What does it mean? You. That's why we go for evangelism. What do we do? We begin to tell people about Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your Lord. Now they begin to repent. That repentance is that you change their soul. You begin to help because it's not you that convicts. It's the Spirit of God that convicts the soul. We can only speak the word. The word is life, and the spirit of God takes the word and it begins to come. It's not by our power. There's no man that you can go and say, today must give your life, it gives you life. It's not power. So we pray, we go, we speak, and the spirit of God does his work. But it says, he that win it. So you that have that passion for evangelism and to win souls is wise. That's how we begin to prosper our soul, by bringing more souls. We'll see this again further. 
The next way that we can prosper our soul is through praise and thanksgiving. It's Psalms, Psalms 150 verse 6. What does it say? Psalms 150 verse 6. That everything that had bread, praise the Lord. Other versions says every soul that have life, praise the Lord. So God loves, for God, 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 God loves to wash, worship. He loves praise. So we should have that attitude of praise. Because we'll begin to praise him and worship him. Now, he says, he that worship him, do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we spend time in praise, we see that we begin to subject the flesh. Now our spirit now begins to get excited. Because the spirit of God now comes to our spirit. Our spirit receives strength and now begins to manifest itself. Then we get into that level where we can worship him now in spirit and in truth. So in doing that, we see that we begin to put up, if, if you want to notice, when you spend time in worship and praise and prayer, you see at some point you realize that you don't feel yourself. You begin to get excited and even laugh. Because now your spirit now has had that ex momentary uh, uh, dominion over the flesh and over total control over your soul that you can you, that you even feel that the flesh is even useless at that moment, at that point in time hallelujah Amen. the next way that we can build our soul or prosper our soul is through the fear of god let's look at luke chapter 1 46 to 50 and sister can you help us to read again Luke 1, from verse 46 to 50. Oh. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. 47. And my spirit had rejoiced in God my Savior. 48. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Mm -hmm. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Thank you. 49. For he that is mighty hath done to me great. Things, and holy is his name. Yes. 50. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Now look it again. He says, All gen henceforth, all generations shall call me what? Blessed. Is it because God gave him, gave her money? Did God give her a plot of land? Did God give her a car or horses? He says, Why? For from uh, 50 and for his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. God has not changed. So the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we begin to fear God, fear God doesn't mean to be afraid. Fear God means we should have reverence, respect for him. We study the word and strive to obey that which is written. Fulfilling his will, repenting. Now, when we begin to fear him, fear him, we begin to shun evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to he continues and says, and to shun evil is understanding. So when you begin to fear God, you shun evil. He says, blessed is he. He says first, he says, his soul, her soul magnifies the Lord. And her spirit rejoices. Did she talk about her flesh? Now she went beyond. When a man is blessed, and you understand what blessing is, true blessing now touch your soul and your spirit. But physical blessing, that is what excites the flesh. What it can see, what it can touch. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. I pray that the Lord help us that we get to the dimension. Amen. 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 The next way we can prosper our soul, let's look at Hebrews 13 verse 7, is to submit to authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we read? Hebrews 13, 17. 17. Yeah. 
Hebrews 13 from verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Hallelujah. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Thank you. He says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself, for they watch for your soul. So it means that there are people that God has positioned by grace and divine wisdom over us to watch over our soul. You see? And he continues and says that for they must give an account. So they don't just give them now authority for control. They will give an account. Hallelujah. Because when we submit now, it will help them that they do it in joy and not in grief. Because it's not perfect. So it means that if your your they, the person that the Lord has put in authority over us, we do not submit to them. For them to do their will, they will have to strain. And they will not do it with joy. Because someone, someone who has authority over our soul or your soul, who is wise, now will force him, because he has to give an account. So he has to do it now in pain. Because he knows that if I abandon it, the problem now is his own problem. But now what does this tell us? Who has that authority? First is our spiritual fathers. Your pastor, your elder, brother, whoever. Your God. Most of us have got children. These are, they have, they have, their souls have been handed to us to have authority over them. How many of us monitor their lives or try to help their soul? not to backslide. We take it, especially for us that is coming from Catholic Protestant background, we day, we, day, we go and stand behind after the baptism, on the reception, we have a high table, we eat well, if the drinks are not enough, we are sure our own bottle of drink is guaranteed because we are God parent. But then after what happens, we have to monitor, help that soul not to lost. The second people who have authority by divine authority, is our parents. As a child, you must submit to your parent. Because that parent, or you as a father or a mother, you have authority over the soul of your children. Because that's what the Bible says, train a child in a way that what? He shall grow and not depart. Train a child in a way that he may grow and not depart. And so what way you train the child is a, is a function of how much you deposit in their soul. Now, if you're able to shape, shape their soul, then the, 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 their spirit will be able now to do God's will and they will do good. They will submit to the, to the, to the spirit and not to the flesh. So when God gives us children, it's not only for us to thank God and give testimony that I'm a father. You have a responsibility to guide that soul to live right. What the Bible says, there is joy in heaven when one soul repents. So if we allow a soul to get lost, it means there is money, in other words, in heaven. So that is our responsibility because we will give an account. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So after that, I would end there for, the, for, for how we can develop our souls. So what are the dangers? Because we'll be looking at soul prosperity. So for a look at physical prosperity, just a bit, there is a danger for materialism or physical prosperity. Psalms 30 verse 6 says, Now in my prosperity I shall never be moved. This is what David said. Hallelujah. Amen. And we go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Moses said, The Lord said unto the children of Israel before they went into the promised land, a land that will be flowing with milk and honey. He says, And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is He who gave you or who gives you the power to make wealth. Now, God was already warning them because He understands or He knows the dangers of, of physical prosperity. That is why we easily get destroyed when we are blessed physically and we are not blessed 
spiritually, then we cannot manage the physical blessings. That's why sometimes we pray for financial blessings and the Lord does not give us. But the Bible says he knows how to give good things to his children. He knows that if he gives us some of those things, he will destroy us. Because we are not mature. We are not grown spiritually. Our soul has not been developed to handle it. We can see a detail of this of in Luke chapter 12 from, uh, uh, from verse 13. If we go to Luke chapter 12 from verse 13. It tells us, it's a, it, it tells us about the story of the rich fool. Are we there? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 12 from verse 13. Mm -hmm. He said, And one of the company said to them, Master, speak to my brother that he may divide the inheritance with me. He's talking about physical things. And he said unto him, Man who made me a judge or divider over you. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. So your life and your blessing and your prosperity is not a function on the things that we possess. The Bible also says that where a man had a treasure is, that is where his heart is. So most often, we, with this covetousness is what we have taken as blessing. It's not true blessing. Blessing of the law makes rich and adding no sorrow. So God cannot give us materialism to destroy us. The materialism, which he says, the Lord says it's a principle. Physical, uh, God says, the Lord says, I will bless the works of your hand. I'm the one who has given you power to make wealth. It means that if you use that power, you make wealth. It's a principle. What you sow, you reap. You work hard to earn more. Have you ever worked more hours and they pay somebody with less hours more than you? It doesn't work that way. So that, that is not God's blessing. Hallelujah. So what is the evidence that our soul is prospering? Because we've, we've seen how we can prosper our soul. But we need physical evidence. I said today is practical. Now we go back now to our main text. Now we we'll look from 1 John from verse 1 to 8. Hallelujah. 1 John from verse 1 now to 8. We'll, go, we'll look at the entire passage. So now we see the evidence that our soul is prospering. Or we have true prosperity. From, from verse 1 to 8. 1 John only one chapter. So it's just the first eight verses. verses. Hallelujah. He says to my to the beloved Gaius, whom I love. So Paul John was writing this letter to Gaius. Ted John, Ted John. I said first. No, oh, sorry. Ted John. Beloved, I pray. Are we there? Ted John. Ted John. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's Ted John. Can we read, sister? Ted John from 1 to 8. The elder unto the well beloved Gauss, whom I love in, in the truth. 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest my prosper and be in health. And even as thy soul prospereth. Stop. Thank you. Now he's addressing Gaius, right? He says, I pray that you may prosper in all things. His prayer and wish for Gaius is for him to prosper in all things. It means that there is a possibility that he was not prospering in all things. There is a possibility that he may not have been in good health. He says, you prosper in all things and in good health. Now he says, just as your soul prospered. That's the interesting part. So Gaius was an elder, was a child of God. His soul was prospering. Now Paul is wishing other things for him. But he was already in the right place. His soul prospered. Do we understand? So there is a possibility that Gaius prospered in some things and not all things. 
one of the things that we are certain that is have his soul prospered. We we'll see there are other things like finances. Financially, he has prospered. It means there are other things that Paul was wishing for him. And in good health. Now, of course, when he said, and in good health caused me to be convinced that probably he was not in the best of physical health. And then, as his soul prospered. Now, go, let's go to verse 3. For I, re I rejoice greatly yes. when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, yes. even as thou walkest in the truth. Yes. For I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Thank you. Let's just wait there. Now, Paul, there was a testimony. Paul now is convinced that he is walking in truth. It means that, in other words, he was a practical and a Christian or a child of God of good standing. His soul is prospering. Now, take the next verse, verse 5. Now, let's see the look. That's where we are going to start. Verse 5 says what? Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren. We'll stop. We'll continue. The first aspect as a proof of our, as an evidence that we are prospering is faithfulness. That was the first thing. Now, the, the, Paul was confirming why he said that his soul prospered. He says, faithfulness in all you do to the brethren and strangers. When the Bible talks about strangers, it's probably new convert or unbelievers. So he was faithful in whatever he was assigned to do. As a child of God, faithfulness in all is, is a very important characteristics when we begin to develop our soul. If you are in a choir, you become faithful to that which you are doing. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 tells us that whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Now you get into that dimension if you are a cleaner in church, you don't clean, you don't, you do it and you with consciousness that I am cleaning God's house. I will not see, and once you are cleaning it every day and in your mind you think that, why is it that I'm cleaning other people are just truly? Once that thought starts running, it's a proof that that's not, though you do it, you are not doing, you are not doing it unto God, like, unto God. You are doing it maybe to satisfy your, your man of God. Mm -hmm. When you come for intercession, when the, when the man of God is there, you break up, ta 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 When the day that he is not there, you sit behind with your phone. That is proof of unfaithfulness, which is practical Christianity. That is how we begin to evaluate. That's how the evidence. The Bible says when the Spirit of God comes upon you, an evidence of what? Speaking in tongues. The things of the kingdom is an evidence and it can be manifest in the physical realm based on its expression in our soul. So faithfulness is one. Even the job that we do, you do it faithfully as unto the Lord. You don't cut corners. Once you are doing it and cutting corners, it's unfaithfulness. You still have work to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue. Six. Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church. Thank you. The next aspect there is love or charity. You realize that you begin to support the things of the kingdom. Now, these were people testifying of Gaius' action. He was giving to the church. Once you begin, okay, let me pray. A very good example that we have nowadays among believers is this, uh, 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 like, I don't want to use the word argument, discussion on tithes, for instance. We have about three categories. We have a category that says it's, it's, it's wrong to give tithes. We have a category that says it's the thing of the Old Testament. You are a Christian, but you say it's the things of the Old Testament. Now you have another category who believe now and give. You see that it, that is a function of your prosperity. Now once you begin to realize that even the money that I give is unto God and not unto man. That's what tells you how prosperous you are, how much your soul has grown. There's a testimony of an Indonesian man, I think the owner of Kogi, that I heard. This man, is, God is when he started his business, he says, God, if you bless me, I will be faithful in my time. He was giving 10%. I said, he got too blessed. Now today he's giving 90% back to the church. 10% is too much for him. 
It is his own revelation. We must not do that. The Bible makes us understand that the apostles of old, they brought everything to the house of God. So if the man of God comes and says, we should bring all that we have, this church closed in automatic. <laughs> No, but this is prosperity of our soul. Because when we start and we begin to engage in such discussions, or we begin to doubt, it tells us how much our soul has developed. There are people who give, forget me, go to the well. There are people who are unbelievers. They sponsor, they give to charity. We hear the people who sponsor abortions. They sponsor vaccine in Africa. They have a lot of money. They give billions. But we believers, we cannot even sponsor our own things in the church. The church go to the well to get money, and the well now controls the church. It's not supposed to be so. It shows us how we have developed. Those are the evidence of our prosperity. When we begin to desire that the things of God, be, be, the work of God, be, is, is being manifested, there are people who sponsor um, uh, missionaries who are not even believers. They give come to the Western world. There are a lot of people who are real, even believers. If I die, let everything that I have be given to the church for missionary work. But we come to us Africans who say that we are more spiritual. But when we die, not even the one that you read to the church, the children say, is manipulation. That church, they don't turn heads. We take it. No, it's practicality. This is true Christian living. They give, if we, if we get, if we've grown and we understand that we give, that the house of God will not lack. The house of God will not lack. People who do not have, who come and take and eat. That is charity. Give it unto, without knowing what is being, it is being used for. If some people were not generous, missionaries would not have gone to Africa, for example. People would not have sacrificed their families and come to, with, with the gospel to us. And today we receive that gospel, we are testifying. They don't pray. We pray. We pray night vigil. We, we fast 40 days. We sleep in church from Monday to Sunday. But then we see have covetousness. Because the doctrine, the true Christianity has been tempered with. We have wrong understanding. We begin to see that our blessing are the things we see. Whereas our blessing are the things that we do not see. Hallelujah. Amen. Con, let's continue. Whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sword, thou shalt do well. Yes. Seven. Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Yes. Eight, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Thank you. Now, when he means that Gaius was giving, one thing that he was doing was giving. That's why I said I believe that he was blessed financially. Now, he says when they went, those who went, they did not take from who? The Gentiles. If we do not give, we believers don't give to the church because the gospel needs money the church will turn to the way to get that money to sponsor the gospel. And when they give you, the devil does not give you anything for free now. It takes double in return. So we have to get to that dimension to know that evidence we should be able now to sacrifice and give. And now in doing this, they were, it was bring, best cases, they were bringing more fellow workers to the truth. In other words, your, another evidence is our passion for souls. We begin to desire. If someone comes and tells us, oh, we need one million crowns to invade Papua New Guinea with the gospel, you are able to give that money. You may not go. But then you are sure that there, are, there is an army invading that land with the gospel and souls have been transformed. What have you done? Without that money, those people cannot get to that land and the gospel will not reach them. The Bible says the creation awaited what? The manifestations of the sons of God. And the end will only come when the gospel has reached the ends of the earth. So we are saying that the end, is, the end has not come because we believers have not taken the gospel to the ends of the earth. So true prosperity is when we begin to get to that dimension. That we've got that desire to see more souls to repent. 
more souls to come to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last but not the least, Leviticus chapter 26, 15 to 17. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we see, we have, the last is uh, evident, is prosperity or victories in battles. Hallelujah. Amen. So Leviticus 26, can we read? Leviticus 15 to 17. Leviticus 26, 15 to 17. And if ye shall despise my statue, mm -hmm. or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, mm -hmm. but that ye break my covenant. Mm -hmm. 16. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, mm -hmm. consumption, mm -hmm. and the burning argue. Ag that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it 17 and I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies mm. they that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none pursueth you Amen. now I said prosperity in battles we have battles always. Now he says that if we look at verse 15, that if we do not abhor to his judgment, if our soul does not yield to the leading of the spirit, there, is a con there are consequences. Diseases will come. Sickness will come. Afflictions will come. Hallelujah. But now, this tells us what I mean, but this does not mean that if you walk right with God, sickness, diseases, affliction, persecution will not come. They will come. But now, if you look at verse, uh, 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 the last sentence of verse 16, it says, And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. So, but if you are a child of God, your enemy shall not eat it. We see the difference. Now, verse, it says, If you set, I will set my face against you, and, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Now, when the enemy shall come, when you are in right standing with a prosperous soul, the enemy shall not defeat you. Hallelujah. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. Now, you see that when we are now in right standing with God, and our soul prosper, we can get to that dimension that Paul was talking about. I do not care what happens to the physical. You, though I am beaten, though I am pressed, I do not care. Though I lack a house to stay, though I lack this, but what I am interested is that my soul rejoices and my spirit is glad because I will be called blessed for the Lord has blessed me. You have good health. There are people, look at Steve Jobs before he went to rest. With all the money he had, he lacked health. You see that, that the dark material blessings become useless. How many of us will be buried with our cars or with our houses and things like that? The outward perishes. So we see that we labor at times to amass so much, to die and leave it. Maybe to children, that if we do not spend time to train them, they sell it and drink alcohol. God forbid. You see that we set our priorities wrong because our soul are not developed. Hallelujah. Amen. So, beloved in Christ, all dear brothers and sisters, our prayer is that we should develop, like the Bible says, we should seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Every other thing will be added unto it. When we begin to focus on seeking God, meditating on His word, these other things that we are fighting so hard, it will come to us. You understand? Because even as we study with the unbelievers, we get jobs the same like them. But that does not stop us. Now. Our difference is the prosperity of our soul. That's what separates us from the Gentiles. That's be our goal. Before they call the believers Christians, it's because they could see that they were different. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can now, with all this, we can realize that the uh, uh, prosperity of the kingdom is the function of the prosperity of our soul. How much our soul has prospered 
tells us how much we have prospered in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now let's conclude now back with Galatians chapter 5. We are read from 16 and 17. And let's take 22. Hallelujah. Let's look at 22. Galatians 5. 22 and 23, let's see. Yes, can go ahead, sister. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, oh. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is the fruit of the Spirit. I said from the beginning, our prosperity, what happens with our soul determines what is expressed in the physical realm. So the true evidence of what we can count or measure our prosperity, because in the world we can measure the richest man in the world. We can measure the strongest man in wrestling and so on. Isn't it? It means there is a dimension. You can quantify it. So also our prosperity in the kingdom can be measured. You can evaluate your prosperity where we were last year to where you are. The same that you can go, I can go into my account and see if I'm richer or poorer from last year. Now he says, now this fruit of the spirit, we said from the beginning, it is the spirit of God that bears witness with our spirit. When the spirit of God comes upon us, there we power. So there is an evidence of our prosperity. And now this is manifested by our expression of the fruits of the Spirit. How much love you can express. How much joy you may lack, but yet you are in joy. You may lack, but you may be troubled on every side. You have sickness around you, people are sick, troubles everywhere, persecution, but yet you have peace. Christ says, my, the peace that passes human understanding, it cannot be understood. Now, the, how much we express, that is how we can quantify if we are uh, uh, growing, in the, in, if our soul is developing in the positive direction or we are, we are prospering in our soul. We become more faithful. We become more patient. Though I don't have, but yet I am joyous. I still praise my God. Because if yesterday you laugh and you cry, you begin to wonder how to do, how to, you begin to stress yourself. And next year, when in that same situation, you are happy. You say, my God will supply my needs and call to my riches in glory. And then you are smiling. It doesn't mean a thing to you. It's an evidence that your soul has prospered. It has developed to, that, to another dimension. And it's our prayer that we, the Lord will help us, that we grow with the help of the Holy Spirit that we will crucify the desires of our flesh and long more for the things of the spirit. That our eyes be set on the things above and not on the things of this world. And we will run this race and have access to the eternal glory that the Lord has reserved for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Let me stand up on our feet and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you immensely for this opportunity. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for teaching us. Thank you, Father, for enlightening the eyes of our understanding. Father, we pray even as we depart, may your word be encoded in our soul. May our soul be transformed that we shall go and begin to hearken to the leading of your spirit and not give in to the subjection or be subjected to our flesh, the desires of our flesh. Father, that we may crucify the flesh and that your spirit may have preeminent and dominion over our soul in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your answered prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We just pray some two prayer points. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, before we pray, I would just like those who have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, and you want Jesus to come into your life, may you repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. 
I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were crucified and buried. The third day you rose again and ascended into heaven. You are seated at the right hand of God Almighty. I believe you are coming again to judge the living and the dead. Come into my life. Forgive my sins. Translate me from the kingdom of darkness into your kingdom of marvelous light. In Jesus' name. If you repeat this prayer, we believe that your sins are forgiven and you are now born again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray in accordance to Hosea chapter 9, verse 14. Hosea 9, 14. He says, give them, O Lord, what will thou give? Give them a, a, a miscarried womb and a dry breast. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That the Lord shall give them a miscarried womb and a dry breast. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we live in a world that before something manifests in the physical, they have dealt with in the spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us to pray and commit the week ahead. That any plan of the enemy fashioned against us, fashioned against us as a church, against our family members, to destroy us, to cut short our life, may that plan be aborted. Amen. May they, that which they have conceived, that they have they are impregnated, that they are they are carried in their womb to give birth against us, to bring forth against us, may it be aborted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if we, they succeed to put it out. Like a baby, they have dry breasts. That baby will die. That plan will die. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray in the spirit and in our understanding in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up our voices and we call upon your name. And say, arise and put an end to the plan of the enemy. Every satanic plan of the enemy to steal your word from us. To call us not to obey our word. To destroy our soul. To kill our bodies. Father, let that plan be aborted. Let that plan be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly, I want us to pray for our Father in the Lord who is out also doing mission work. That may the Lord continue to strengthen him. Amen. May the Lord continue to use him as a vessel of honor to be a blessing and to impact life Amen. and to touch souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for his family that whatever the Lord is using, he let the enemy not raise the standard against yes. them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you. 
Father, we give you glory. To you alone receive the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our last prayer point, Judges 5, verse 20. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray that wherever they have gathered against us, against our children, against our family members, just as they fought against Caesarea from above. May the Lord who says, he says the battle is not our battle, it is his battle. Even his word that he has sent for, the enemy shall not steal it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray in the spirit and in our understanding in Jesus' name. E kata le preko do sato, e kete te li brada basu kutu la prata, e kapa le kondo maleko do sata le prendo koyo, e kata le preko sata, e kara wa shoko to le prete, e parada basu kutu la prikata basata, Father we give you glory, in Jesus mighty day we are praying, in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. A quick announcement before we go to our communion. Just a reminder that next week we are going to have a power packed praise time here in, on Saturday from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. It will be an amazing time of praise and worship. We have our sister, who is the lead organizer. After this, maybe after the communion, we can talk with her so we have an idea of how the program will look like. Our choir is invited. We do not want to miss it. I assure yeah. you that. Amen. Let's make time and keep the rendezvous. 1 p.m., let's be here. Like be here, one of the ways to prosper our soul is through praise and worship. Yeah. Let's come and put the God's word into practice. The Bible says we should not only be hearers, mm. let us be doers. Amen. So the first evidence we'll see on Saturday, those who, are, who, have, who will be doers, our priority will be the things of the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They say a moment spent in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand Amen. years outside. Amen. Hallelujah. How glorious it is for brethren to get together. Amen. Please, you don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. We also want to welcome our sister, Catherine, who is visiting us from Germany. You are welcome. And may the Lord bless you and take you back safely. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, let's just rush to our communion because of time, after which we have our cleaning as usual. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, as the Apostle Paul had led us in accordance with 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23. He said, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until till he comes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah, therefore, I want us to pray a communion. Abba, Father, we thank you as your word says, as often as we eat of your body and drink of your blood, we declare your death unto you. We proclaim your death unto you. Come. Father, therefore, we pray as we eat of your body and drink of your blood, may our mortal beings be May our, may our bottom beings be strengthened. Any sickness and affliction that has held us bound because of our iniquities, Father, as we eat of your body and drink of your blood, may our sins be washed. May every iniquity disappear in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, may we find strength to continue to do your will in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Holy, 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 holy is 
the Lord. You are holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord. You are faithful, 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 faithful. Faithful is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord. You are holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Holy is the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we worship you because you are holy. Thank you, Jesus, for laying your life upon Calvary for our sake. We thank you because we know you are seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto you. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, come and feed us. You dwell in our hearts. Lead us in all that which we do and we hope for. May you never depart from us in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. We thank you, Father, for this awesome time of worship and praise and for your word that you sent forth. Mm -hmm. We cover your word and everything that you've done tonight with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. As your word says, whoever the Son of Man set free is free. And therefore, we declare that which you've done tonight is yes and amen and it is permanent in our life. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, because we are blessed. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us and for the prospering our souls. Mm -hmm. Father, let this word be uh, written on the tablets of our heart and let not the enemy steal it. Mm -hmm. In the days of adversity, let this word that you've released tonight, Father, may it arise and help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. May we continue to be and abide in your presence forever. Mm -hmm. Father, even as we depart, may your presence go before us in the week ahead to make a crooked pastry, mm -hmm. to set us under the gates of brass and the brass of iron, mm -hmm. uprooting and pulling down every mountain and may that we shall move triumphantly triumphantly and possess all that which is reserved for us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. that again we shall gather on Saturday to sing praises to worship you. Continue to empower us that our strength shall not fail in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we believe it and we declare in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. our week ahead is blessed. Mm -hmm. The works of our hands are blessed. Mm -hmm. We declare our children are preserved. Mm -hmm. We declare good tithing is our portion. Mm -hmm. We declare we shall possess our possession. Mm -hmm. We declare no weapon formed by the enemy shall prosper against us. Mm -hmm. We declare the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. May your peace encompass us. Mm -hmm. May your joy fill our heart. Mm -hmm. We decree faithfulness is our portion. Mm -hmm. Patience is our virtue. Mm -hmm. In the most powerful name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. blessed by today's message as we prepare to close for tonight we want to encourage you to take a few minutes to leave a positive comment a like and also to subscribe if you have been blessed by today's message please click the notification bell so you can get notified next when we are online god bless you and we hope to see you again send testimonial to this email address and inquiries